Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another Monday End Time Talk. Uh, thank you for taking the time to tune into this uh, video today, to this video Bible study today. Uh, today, it's actually Tuesday, so uh, every once in a while we have Tuesday End Time Talk. Uh, so instead of Met, uh, this week it's Tet, I guess, T-E-T-T. -T -T. Praise God. Uh, but we're going to have a, uh, a, an a interesting, uh, informative, and uh, prayerfully helpful uh, lesson uh, this evening. Uh, and we're continuing our study on the final world dictator, uh, a.k.a. the Antichrist, uh, a.k.a. the lawless one, the son of perdition, the man of sin. Uh, as we uh, learned in previous uh, video lessons there, Throughout history, there have been many anti-Christ. Uh, in fact, the Apostle Paul in 2 Thessalonians uh, taught us, and even the Apostle John in his epistles taught us, that there are many anti-Christ. There have been uh, many anti-Christ, and the spirit of anti-Christ uh, is and has been already at work. Uh, and throughout history, even God has judged the world, uh, the time of Noah, the time of of, of the judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, throughout history, there has been judgment. Throughout the history of Israel, there has been judgment when they were taken away in captivity by the Babylonians, by the Assyrians. Uh, they were in under siege of the Romans. Uh, there has been much, much times throughout history where man has become so wicked and the spirit of Antichrist uh, just was working and working. We also talked about the spirit of iniquity, the mystery of iniquity last time versus the mystery of godliness. And we broke that down a little bit. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the 10 horns and the 10 toes. Now, some of you may not even have a clue what that is referring to. Some of you may have somewhat of a clue. You've, you may have heard about it at some point uh, throughout your time in the church. Praise God. But we're going to look at it just briefly, uh, just a, a, a sort of a broad brush on it, and uh, it will help us understand the origin of the Antichrist, where he can, where he will come from, um, and uh, what uh, the building up to his coming on the scene will be like. Uh, praise God. Um, even now uh, in, in our world, you can see the building up towards this uh, final world government, right? Uh, throughout history, there has been attempts at full world domination. Uh, if you look back uh, at the Babylonian kingdom, the kingdom that Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, that famous story in the Bible that we all know about, uh, that was uh, world domination, right? Near world domina domination by King Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom. Uh, you know, and we'll, we're actually going to get into the book of Daniel tonight to talk about the ten toes and the ten horns. Um, if you consider all of the kingdoms that came after uh, the Babylonian kingdom, we'll talk about those in just a minute. Uh, the Medes, the Persh, the Grecian Empire, the Roman Empire. If you look at uh, 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 Hitler's Third Reich, Germany's Third Reich under Hitler and the Nazi Party, uh, that was an attempt at world domination. You go all the way back to Genesis chapter 11 with Nimrod and them building that tower. That was the initial uh, attempt at a world government uh, system to sort of uh, say, hey, we don't need God. He's not going to be able to, to judge us uh, when we decide to do what we want to do. They wanted to operate in a spirit of iniquity. Uh, and iniquity only brings about destruction. Iniquity, uh, which is self-will, right? Doing what you want to do, irregardless of God's logos, the written word, and rhema, his, his spoken word uh, in your life day to day. Uh, that is iniquity, and iniquity always leads to destruction. It never ends well. Praise God. Not because, you know, uh, God is throwing a fit and and it's and he's like, oh, it's my way or the highway. No, it's because that's just how the that's just how the universe. That's just how existence 
this reality that we live in. That's just how it was designed. Hallelujah. Righteousness prevails and, and favor will follow you if you live righteously according to God's word and destruction will follow you if you are lifted up in pride and iniquity fills your heart and you follow it. It's just that simple. That is the law of existence. Praise the Lord. Uh, and so anyway, uh, that, that's some of the stuff we talked about. And tonight, just a broad brush quickly, I want to show you the 10 toes and the 10 horns and how, what this has to do uh, with the coming, the coming Antichrist figure. Praise God. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to read uh, a few passages here, and then I'm going to take a couple minutes to comment on them and uh, help us to understand what is being uh, discussed here. Daniel chapter number 2, verse number 31. Here, uh, the the context is King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, during this time uh, of Israel's existence, they were taken captivity by the Babylonian kingdom. Uh, Judah was the southern kingdom of Israel, uh, taken captivity. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar took some wise men out of Israel uh, to be uh, within his, um, you know, royal uh, sages and wise people uh, and so uh, he had Daniel and, and the three Hebrew boys, uh, which they renamed the Bab Babylonian Babylon renamed. They had names before this, but they renamed them according to their customs and to their uh, ethnicity, uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Uh, so we're picking up here where uh, the king had a dream and he wanted to not he wanted his wise men not only to interpret the dream, but to tell him first what the dream was that he had and then interpret it. Impossible, right? Yeah. And so he knew that if someone could do that, then they were truly uh, connected to the God of the universe. Uh, amen. And so he had this dream. And because his uh, wise men in his kingdom uh, could not do such an impossible thing for humans to do. Tell somebody what dream. Imagine, imagine you, you married couples. Imagine you waking up next to your wife in the morning, husband, uh, wife, you waking up next to your husband and your husband or your wife just had a dream that night. They didn't tell you the dream and they rolled over and they said, hey, honey, tell me the dream that I had last night. And then I need you to give me the interpretation of it. You'd be like, uh, duh, what, how am I going to tell you what dream you had? <laughs> Praise God. But this is what King Nebuchadnezzar was requesting and his, his guys couldn't do it. And so uh, the decree went out. Nebuchadnezzar had enough of the nonsense, had enough of the false prophecies, the false uh, you know, wisdom that uh, his sages operated with. And he said, listen, if you can't do it, all of y'all going to be killed. I'm taking all y'all out. I'm sending out a decree that every wise man in my kingdom, uh, uh, you know, every sorcerer is going to be killed. And so the, and, and so his captain of his of, of his army went out to do that. I believe his name was Arioch. He went out to do that. And then when he finally got to Daniel's home, uh, he was get, he, he gave Daniel the news. And Daniel said, why is the king's decree so urgent? Give me some time. The God of heaven can do this. Just give me some time. And and and, and Daniel began to salt the Lord in the time that he received. And, and God answered. God answered. And he gave him the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had and the interpretation. Praise God. Let me read it. Uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse number 31. You, O king, were watching. He's telling him the dream now. You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image, this great image whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet. That's very important uh, concerning this dream, because this dream is really a, a, a prophecy of, of future events. Uh, we will turn out, we will, we will see that here shortly. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron mingled with clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. 
Praise God. This is the dream, Daniel says. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. Listen to it. You, O king, verse number 37, you, O king, are king of kings. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them, ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. He's the first kingdom. Uh, let, me, let me quickly summarize. Daniel saw a great image of a man broken out into different sections. And he, and he says that the head was of fine gold, the chest and the arms were of silver, the belly and the thighs were of bronze, the legs were of iron, and the feet of it were partly iron and partly clay. Okay, so that's the image here. You can see an image of it, uh, kind of what that may have looked like on your screen. Uh, and so Daniel is about is giving the interpretation now. And he says, um, he says here in verse 38, uh, or uh, the middle of verse 38, he was given them, in, he, he has given them into your hand and has made you rule over them all. You are the head of gold. So the kingdom of Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar was, uh, the interpretation of that is that he represented the head of gold. Uh, but after you, listen to it, after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth and the fourth kingdom. So we know these sections then represent kingdoms, kingdoms that shall arise. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks into pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Yet the strength of the iron, which kingdom? That last kingdom uh, he was being, it was being referred to there. The kingdom of iron, he's saying, shall be divided. Yet the strength of the iron shall be in it. So whatever strength and power and wisdom and, and, and the way in which that kingdom operated shall be represented in this final kingdom, the feet mixed with iron and clay. There shall be an element of the iron kingdom. Okay, and we'll find out what each of those kingdoms are. Uh, and so uh, uh, the, uh, the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with clay. Verse 42, and as, uh, and as shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. I'm sorry, I just read that. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. Uh, and so uh, he says, I'm going to finish out here. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men. They will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, listen to it. Verse 44 is so important. Daniel chapter 2, verse number 44, summarizes this whole. It tells us when all of this, when that final kingdom, the kingdom with the ten toes, okay, uh, that, that feet, Mixed iron mixed with clay with the ten toes. Okay, this is the kingdom that God says is going to be on the earth when he makes his return to the earth just ahead of us now. Just a few years from now, when he makes his return to the earth to set up his kingdom. Listen to it, verse number 44. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand, how long? Forever. Verse 45, inasmuch as you saw the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. Remember that stone? He said in the, in the, in the interpretation, there was a stone, or in the uh, dream, there was a stone cut out from the mountains, and it rolled out and knocked out the feet and the ten toes, the iron mingled with clay, it knocked out the feet. It went specifically to the feet. And here's what Daniel says that represents. And inasmuch as you saw the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. 
Praise God. Uh, so what are we seeing here? We're seeing a vision that Nebuchadnezzar had. Daniel gave the dream and the interpretation. He broke it down. What he saw, a man broken up into sections, gold, silver, bronze, iron, and then iron mingled with clay. The stone that was cut out from the mountain represents the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ returning to set up his kingdom. That stone went, hit the feet of the image. And remember, uh, verse 44, the Bible says, Daniel 2, verse 44, the Bible says that in the days of these kings, which kings? The ones, the feet, the ten toes, the days of those kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall stand for forever. Praise God. So it must be that this final world dictator is going to be a part of that kingdom that represents the ten toes, that world dominating kingdom. Now we understand, according to Revelation chapter 13, that there is going to be a world government, a world governing system. It is through this system that the Antichrist will reign. He will wield all power and authority over much uh, of the world. Praise God. Now, those are the ten toes. Let me quickly show you the ten horns which correlate which with the ten toes. And it gives you a little bit more uh, of an angle. And uh, next week, we're going to continue in this lesson because this is a deep one and a long one that helps us to really understand uh, that that the Bible is 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 so divinely inspired. It's so amazing how God gave us the clues and the things to look for throughout history. And they have come to pass. And the things that have not yet they are shaping together right now, even right now, to come to pass shortly. Praise God. So we're going to take a look at this specific lesson or this specific, uh, uh, yes, this specific lesson in this series. Uh, we're going to break it out for the next couple of weeks so that we can see the fullness of it. And I can kind of uh, exhaust more of it because this uh, 15 to 20 minute video is not going to do it justice uh, enough for me to be satisfied. Praise God. But let me show you the quickly the 10 horns and we'll end this particular uh, lesson tonight, Tuesday end time talk. And next week we'll pick it up with the same, uh, continuing on the same vein here, the 10 toes and the 10 horns. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I would encourage you to do a little studying of this yourself so you can familiarize yourself uh, with this prophecy. Praise God. But Daniel chapter number seven, verse number 19 uh, this, uh, Daniel chapter seven talks about, uh, four beasts and then the final beast, the fourth beast has 10 horns. Okay. Uh, the final beast has 10 horns. Now, Daniel chapter two talked about, uh, uh you know, layers of uh, the uh, layers of the human body, right? Where the head represented gold, the chest and arms represented silver, the belly and the thighs represented bronze, the feet represented iron and so on and so forth. And it broke it down all the way down to the feet with the 10 toes. But this one uses beasts. This one uses beasts. And the final beast is representing really the same thing that those feet with the 10 toes represent. Listen to it real quick and then we will end this particular video, okay? I just wanna share with you the passage. Uh, verse number 19 of Daniel chapter 7. Uh, then I wished to know the truth, or rather, let me go up a little bit here. Uh, verse number 7, Daniel chapter 7, verse number 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, Daniel's having a vision from the Holy Ghost, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth, iron teeth. Remember the, the ten toes had iron mixed with clay? And we see the iron element here again. Hmm. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, hmm. and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. It was a different type of kingdom. And it had, listen to it, ten horns. I was considering the horns, Daniel said, and there was another horn, a little horn, a little one, uh, th this particular New King James Version says little one, uh, coming up among them, before whom three of the ten horns fell and were plucked out by the roots. So this little horn that Daniel sees comes up and uproots three horns. In other words, 
somehow he that little horn is going to uh, replace three of those horns. Those three horns are going to fall to his power and might, to whatever that little horn is, uh, before whom three horns were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Praise God. Amen. Uh, we're going to pick up there next week because this is powerful stuff. I want you to keep this stuff in mind uh, and uh, as we continue to look uh, at things concerning the end time on these video Bible studies and we continue this series of the final world dictator, a.k.a. the Antichrist. Uh, this stuff is coming to pass shortly and uh, I want us to understand uh, the times and so that we are not uh, caught away in the rigmaroles of this secular life, so much so that we miss what's happening right in front of us. Praise God. God bless you. In Jesus' name, thank you for watching Tuesday End Time Talk. I love you. In Jesus' name, God bless.